So, so far in uh, fluids, we've had several principles. This is going to be our last one, Bernoulli's principle will be our last one. And the Bernoulli family was actually pretty famous. There was Johann and Daniel and Joseph Bernoulli. I think it was Joseph. And, no, Jacob. And the three of them all did lots of things in math and in science, but... At one point, one of the sons and his father were up for the same sort of international science prize, and it got very acrimonious. There's an ACT word for you, acrimonious. They were hateful to each other, the father and son. And the son won the award, and the dad just about kicked his son out of his life because maturity. (laughs) Right? Compete with your child. That sounds like a great idea. No. That's not a good idea. But anyway, so what are our principles that we've had so far? Pascal's says what? Not everybody at once. (laughs) Pascal's principle says that if you apply a force anywhere in a closed contained liquid, you apply it everywhere in the closed contained fluid. So one where if you mash down on the water, the scale reading goes up. That's the one you just had a lab on. Then there's Archimedes' principle, which says that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid that you've taken the space for, the weight of the displaced fluid. And today, Bernoulli's is going to be our last principle that we're going to work with. And Bernoulli says the faster that a fluid flows, the less pressure it exerts. The faster a fluid flows, the less pressure it exerts. Okay? So... Let's look at that. We'll write that down. Bernoulli's principle. Faster fluid flows, the less pressure it exerts. So faster goes with less pressure. Zoom that in. There we go. Less pressure it exerts on the walls. On the walls of the container. So I'm going to try to draw this so that you can see what's going on here. But let's start with pressure is force divided by area. So let's do a little little constriction in the tube. Have our velocity going that way. There's my little disk of water. Now the equation of continuity says what happens to the velocity when we constrict the pipe. We go from big pipe to little pipe, equation of continuity, conservation of mass, says what happens when we move into the little section? Not the force. Not the pressure, pressure, actually. You have to go faster. To get the same volume in and volume out, the second part, the constricted part, has to have a faster flow. Not faster, not the flow rate is faster, the velocity of the water itself is faster. Okay, And the reason for that is when this comes in here, what happens to that disk? It gets a really small diameter, which means it then turns into a long, thin pipe instead of sort of a thin, fat one. Big diameter, small thickness at the beginning. So we have a big diameter and a small thickness turns into a small diameter with a big thickness. 
because water in has to equal water out. So here we have some velocity, and this is faster flow. Velocity is increased. Okay? You take that down just a touch. Now, what happened to the area contact? Area touching the walls and the area touching the walls. How much water touched the walls at the beginning? This has a small contact area. In other words, if you want to think of it like this, here's our paper towel roll. If this is our tube of water that's running through, it touches the walls all the way around the outside of the paper towel roll. What happens when we get to the inside, that small one? Now we're only using the inside of the paper towel tube, the, the cardboard part. And in fact, what happens to the cardboard part? It spreads out. Since you have to smush the diameter, you have to stretch the length. So far, so good? So what does that do to the area of contact? What's the area of contact now? So we see a bigger area of contact... And if we go back to look, that means pressure, if we increase the area, means the pressure has to decrease. And that's what Bernoulli's principle says. Our administration's amazing. So last Monday when we came in, we all had a Coca-Cola, a can of Coca-Cola, leaded, sugared, <laughs> and a jar of homemade dill pickles. This week we all got water bottles with straws and a happy note. Who does that, right? Like Our admin thinks of stuff like that. I appreciate it. Now I can have more water on my desk, or Mountain Dew, depending on how I want to roll that day. So... You kind of see what Bernoulli is saying. It's kind of like, let's say I have Tourette's syndrome. I actually have a cousin that has Tourette's syndrome. And he has several ticks. But let's imagine that my tick is that as I'm walking, I have to touch the wall. Every step I touch the wall. That's my tick. I had a student many, many years ago, one of my first years at Blackman. His tick was to chew on the inside of his jaw got so bad with stress that year he chewed all the way through the side of his jaw he had to have surgery it was awful I felt terrible for him but it's not something you can control so I'm touching the wall every step I take right how many times do I touch the wall well if I'm just walking I probably touch the wall a lot what happens if I see one of my friends are start running down the hall I still have to touch it do I touch the same wall as much no, because I'm moving faster, so when I hit the wall again, I've covered a bigger distance. That's another way to think about what's happening here. If the water moves fast past a section, it can't have contact with the same wall because that water particle hit the wall, and now it's all the way down there. It's not in the same wall. So because of the speed of the fluid, you get less pressure, which is very counterintuitive because what does your head say? If I take the hose pipe out back, and I cover half of it with my thumb, does it feel like it has less pressure? Not to me. It feels like it has more force on my thumb, right? More pressure in that same area. But the pipe part is what is actually feeling the less pressure. My thumb gets all the water trying to get out through that spot, and I feel the push from the water trying to get out. So different forces that we're talking about here. All right, now, don't panic. This formula looks terrible. So here's the formula that goes along with this. 
and it's the conservation of energy. Conservation of energy for fluids. I'm going to refresh over here real quick. Conservation of mass is flow rate is constant. So volume per second See, volume per time is equal to area times velocity. Time. This one's velocity. This one's volume. Flow rate is constant, so velocity over time equals area times velo or volume over time equals area times velocity. That's our conservation of mass. Water in equals water out. This one is called the equation of continuity. This one is called Bernoulli's equation. And it says pressure one plus one half density volume squared plus density gravity height equals pressure two one half density velocity squared plus density gravity height. Okay, so what it really says, that looks horrifying, I know. It says that the pressure is the same throughout, but may change due to size or shape. So, I'm going to let you write all that. I'm going to zoom that one back up a little bit so you can see all the little letters. And then we can talk. Mm-hmm. It says pressure due to speed. Pressure due to speed. And I'll wait till you finish writing and then we can talk. Because I know it's hard to listen and think and write all at the same time. And given the way I did math in first period, we should probably not trust my math today. <laughs> Had one of those days. Miscopying numbers, can't divide. Don't know what's wrong with me. So I want you to kind of remember something from Physics 1. When we did conservation of energy in Physics 1, what kinds of energy or types or forms of energy did we talk about? When we did conservation of energy, what did we switch back and forth between? One starts with a K. The other one starts with a P. And they kind of look like those two terms we've got up there. Something potential energy and kinetic energy. 
So this is a conservation of energy statement. Okay? So the, the first term is just what is the actual pressure at that point? Okay, what's the pressure at that point? Then, if the particle is moving at a speed, if the water is moving at some speed, some velocity, there will be some energy due to, or some pressure due to the speed at which it's flowing. That's kind of like your kinetic energy piece. And then the density times gravity times height is gauge pressure. You know, normally the height of the column of fluid you're talking about, that one, but that's going to be a lot like potential energy because potential energy was mass times gravity times height. So you have what's your starting amount, how much energy do you have due to motion, and how much energy do you have moving up and down, okay? So let's look at one of these. There are basically three kinds of problems that we do with... Um, this stuff. So let me let me draw them. Let me find them actually. Uh, I'll just be it'd be better just to draw it. Okay. So the first problem is one that looks like this. And so here's point A, here's point B, let's say this is point 40 meters, velocity over here is 3 meters per second, and the diameter is 10 centimeters, over here the diameter is 6 centimeters, we don't know the velocity. And what they're going to ask me is, what is the pressure difference between A and B? So you know in your house, you probably know in your house, I don't know if you know this or not, but you probably know that the water pipes are actually underneath your house. You should know that, I would think. Why do they come in underneath your house? Why would you put water pipes below your house instead of running them up the side of the wall like into the upper deck and then let them fall back down to the lower deck? You, yeah, you have to work to make the water go up. Yeah, you get for free that it goes downhill, so you have to work to make it go up. But in a more practical sense, think in terms of insurance. Why would an insurance company not want you to put pipes going into your house at the top? What do pipes all do eventually? Leak or burst, one of the two. So you put the pipes, the water pipes come in from the bottom so that if they burst, they burst under your house, hopefully not in your walls. But we all do understand that, you know, your bathrooms, you have bathrooms on the second floor, you're going to have some water that's going, having to be pumped upstairs and then come back down. So we might want to know, well, what's the pressure difference between the top and bottom of your house? Or if your pipe has to go up over some curb into your sink, you know, it goes up over the little well and it goes up to your sink, What's the difference in pressure from what it actually comes into the house to what you see at the faucet in your sink in the kitchen? So this is that kind of problem. And the question is, what's the difference in pressure from A to B? So here's what we're going to do. We want to be, when we do these problems with Bernoulli's, what we really want to do is get rid of as many terms as we humanly can so that we don't have six things up there. We only have two or three. That would be better. So, the first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to figure out how fast the thing is moving at B. So this is going to be a two-step. The first step, find velocity at B. And to do that, we're going to do our review piece, which we're going to do the equation of continuity. 
area 1 velocity 1 equals area 2 velocity 2. So pi times radius squared times velocity, which was 3, equals pi times radius squared times velocity. The pi's cancel out. Now we pull out our calculator. Because as I said, haven't been super sharp on the old math today. So this side comes out as 0 .0075 and this part is oops. Point zero zero nine. So V equals zero zero seven five divided by zero 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 nine is eight point three meters per second. Eight point three meters per second. So the pipe diameter got smaller. Smaller radius means higher speed. We're going faster. All right. Now can I flip the page over? Do you need a minute? Okay. I'll wait just a second. Okay. Now, let's go to the scary part, which is the Bernoulli's piece. Pressure one, pressure due to speed. So I think pressure, kinetic energy, potential energy has to equal pressure, kinetic energy, potential energy. So here's my all my pieces. So, before I start filling this in, let's go back and look at our picture and ask ourselves, where do we want to put the height equals zero? Where would you like to put height equals zero? At the bottom of what? At, at the level of A? Okay, you guys see that? Why would you want to pick that? Yeah, because if we pick B, we'd have to go down and remember to use negatives, and that doesn't seem cool. Why do we not pick the very bottom of the pipe over there by I, A? A looks like it's kind of in the middle of the pipe. Why don't I pick the very bottom? Well, because I don't know how far it is, right? Like, I don't know how. The very bottom would be at the radius. It would be five centimeters down, but I don't know where A is but I know A to B is 40 centimeters, or at least it should look like that. So here we go. P1, I do not know. Don't know this one. So for right now, he has to stay in. What's the velocity at that point? Well, if this is water, our density is 1,000, and our velocity was 3, and because, oh, you can't see that. Sorry, folks. So this is our, sort of our kinetic energy piece. And density is 1,000. Gravity is 10. But we're going to let the height be 0. So this is the A side, and this is the B side. So that's my left-hand side.
What happens on the B side? Well, I don't know pressure too. So I don't know this one either. I know the density of water is still 1,000. And I know the speed is 8.3. And density of water is still 1,000. Gravity is still 10. And the height is 0.40. So this is one where we don't have but one term that we can make go to zero. And that makes us sad. We are sad by that. Sorry, would it help to zoom in to one side at a time? Yeah, okay. Okay, so here's the A side. Everybody got the A side? Okay. Now here's the B side. Okay. Ready to do the math part? Okay, so what did the question ask me to find? The question asked me to find the difference in pressure. So that would be pressure 1 minus pressure 2 or pressure 2 minus pressure 1. I could do either one of these. I don't care which. I tend to like to do second place minus first place, ending minus starting. So with this big, huge equation, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to move all the stuff that's numbers on A, all the stuff that's numbers on A, I'm going to move it to the other side of the equation, and I'm going to take the P2 and move it over here by P1. So, P1 minus P2 equals all of this junk, all the numbers move to the other side. So I get a negative 1 half, 1,000, 3 squared, a negative 1,000, whoops, this one's a zero times 10 times 0 plus 1 half 1,000 8.3 squared plus 1,000 10 and 0.40 and then I just literally put it in the calculator So, so I get this one is minus 4,500, that one was zero, plus, this one is 34,445 and the last one is 4,000 so the difference in pressures is Three, three, nine, four, five pascals. There's our difference in pressures. I'm 
going to stop because I know you're copying and you're looking and you're thinking. That's the hardest kind of Bernoulli's when you have all the terms left in except for one. So who had the higher pressure, point one or point two? If we say P1 minus P2 and it comes out positive, who was the bigger pressure? P1 was the bigger pressure. Why was it the bigger pressure? Because it was deeper in the fluid and the speed was still pretty noticeable. So it sped up a lot when it moved uphill, but when it moved uphill, you lost that depth of fluid piece and that gauge pressure makes a difference. Okay? I'll wait and see if there's questions and then we'll do the next kind. There's really only three kinds of problems they ever give you on the AP test. The next kind is the one they do almost every time. Like, if I ran through the old AP questions, you'd see that it was pretty much every question except for one or two. And we'll do that. Okay. Here's the next kind. That's sample problem number one. Here's sample problem number two. And this is the water tower problem. Water tower or tank problem. And the water tower tank problem goes something like this. You got your water tower. You guys have all seen these. You got the city name there. Tower is 40 meters. from the ground to the top of the tank. So we've got a tower that's 40 meters from the ground to the top of the tank and is filled with water. A small hole develops a small hole, five centimeters in radius, develops at the bottom right edge. Of the tank. What is the pressure at the hole? And with what velocity does water exit the hole? So let's put some numbers on here. Here to here is 40 meters, 35 meters. Here's the hole. So here's what I want you to think. After you get a chance to write, I'll let you write. Then we'll think. After we've done this one, I'm going to take a stop and we'll do the other kind of problem on Friday. We'll give this chance to soak a little bit.
because the thinking physics part is the most important part. The math part is important, but it's not the most important thing, as you probably saw on the AP test last year. Not much math, but certainly a lot of reasoning. So, let's look at what happens here. Now, here's what I want you to think about. Back in the old days, every city had a water tower. Why did you have a water tower? To make the gauge pressure go really high because you put a, a tube of water that's really tall so all your houses and bathrooms and businesses and all that were at a high pressure because you had this one really tall tower and it was connected to everybody's pipes, right? You drive to any small town just about and you will find a big water tower up on stilts, right? You guys know what I'm talking about? You've seen them? Drive down the interstate by Watertown. The Watertown one's right there by the interstate. So, but now we use pumps to keep the pressure high instead of using bunches of tall water tanks. One, because they leak. Two, because people were forever climbing up on them to graffiti them. And then some people would go swimming in them and die. You know, people are smart. But anyway, I digress. So this is what I want you to think. This is a huge big water tower, and it's got a hole that's about that big. Right? Little circle hole. That will help you understand what I'm about to do. And I'll write this down as well. So let's write our equation. P1, one-half density velocity squared. Density, gravity, height, P2, one-half density, velocity squared, density, gravity, height, what is the pressure at the hole? Okay, so here we go. What is the pressure at the top of the tank? That probably is just pressure due to the atmosphere. Just pressure due to the atmosphere. Because is it off the surface of the earth? Yes. It's higher than we are, but the pressure is probably not. As you saw, if you've done the, the Pascal's lab, you notice that if you move up and down in air, it doesn't really matter. But if you move up and down in water, it made a big difference. Or up and down in honey. Some of you filled your tanks with honey. I know you did. That's what lots of people like to do. Um, you notice that that made a big difference, but air doesn't really. So the fact that it's 40 meters off the ground is probably not important in terms of atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure, top of the tank. Now, <clears throat> this next part... So this is going to be our pressure of the atmosphere. So this will be 100,000. This part is going to be zero because water level in whole tank is not changing very much. In other words, the velocity of the tank level would be, we've got this massive big old water tank, right? Hundreds of thousands of gallons. Are you going to see the water level shrink? You're going to see the water level from the top go down with a hole that's five centimeters. If, I mean, if I waited all day, I would be able to mark it, right? But if I'm watching it, the amount of water that's flowing down, the water level of the whole tank is not changing enough to be noticed. So that's one of these times when we use some physics to knock that term out. That velocity is essentially zero. The water level is going down, but not enough to measure, not enough to worry about. That's the argument we make. Okay? Now, where do we want to put our height equals zero? 
Okay, we're going to put this is H equals zero, where the hole is. Okay, so the hole height, so what would this term be? What would be the height at the top? If we put the height at zero at the bottom of the tank, where's the top of the tank? Five meters. So this would be 1,000 times 10 times 5 meters. And that's going to equal P2, which is what we are trying to find. Zoom up a little bit. Now, does water come out of the tank really fast? Yep. And that's going to be something else we're trying to find. And what about our last term? Last term is going to be zero because we made height equal zero at the hole. So far so good? So how many terms do I actually have left? This time I have four terms left. Four terms left. So I'm going to, we have 100,000 plus 50 times 1,000 is 50,000 plus P2 plus one half of 1,000 V squared. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find the velocity of the water coming out the hole and then use that to find our pressure. Okay? So, need to find velocity at hole. So, I'm going to have to turn the page again. So, we are 100, whoops, 150,000 equals P2 plus one-half 1,000 V2. So that's where we've gotten to. Now, I'm trying to think. AP would probably have you on this problem, they would probably have you get to this statement. Okay, they say write Bernoulli's equation for this scenario. You know how we had those last year, like write it like this or move things around. <clears throat> and then they would say something like, if V2 equals 5 meters per second, what is P2? Let's go ahead and give that information. And I'll show you the other way they might go. So they could go from this to this. And then we'd go, okay, P2, we've got 150,000 equals P2 plus one-half, 1,000, 5 squared, and that's 500 times 25, 125. 125,000? I think that's 125,000. I'm going to check it. So, twelve thousand five hundred. Okay, thank you. Felt like that might be too much. Okay, so twelve thousand five hundred. So then P2 would be 150,000 minus 12,500, which would be 137,5 pascals. Here would be our P2. So 
so the speed of the water in the hole caused the hole pressure to go down by 12,500 pascals. That would be if they wanted me to find P2. The other way they would ask this question is they would tell you how fast the water level drops. They would tell you the water level is decreasing at 3 centimeters per second. And then you'd use the equation of continuity to find the velocity. Then you'd use the velocity to find the pressure. That would be the other version of this. Okay, but I'm going to stop for there today. As we probably need to let our brains rest. We've been beating them pretty hard this period. So we'll stop.